Hello. In this video, we are going to introduce another kind of discrete random variable, the hypergeometric random variable. In introducing this kind of variable, we are also going to learn, however, about the difference between sampling with and without replacement. As always with these videos on random variables, the learning outcomes are by that by the end of the video, you should be able to explain what the hypergeometric hyper random variable can be used to model. Furthermore, you should also be able to write down the probability mass function for a hypergeometric random variable. Without further ado, let's get started on the explanations. As we often done, we will start from something that by now should be familiar, the binomial random variable. We have seen in previous videos that the binomial random variable measures the probability of obtaining exactly k successes in n identical and independent trials. Furthermore, we should also know by now that the probability mass function for this type of random variable is the expression shown on this slide. To understand how the hypergeometric distribution comes about, we are going to consider a particular way of generating binomial random variables. We are going to suppose that we have a cup containing red and green balls, as shown here. Statisticians are quite grand, and for some reason they often talk about the balls being in an urn rather than a cup. Alternatively, they might state that there is a population containing n green and m red balls. The point, however, of all these statements is that there are a finite number of balls and that there are exactly two types of balls. In this case, there are exactly 12 balls, four of them are red, while eight of them are green. We now select a ball at random. There is an equal probability for selecting all the balls, and consequently, because there are four red balls and eight green balls, the probability of selecting a red ball is a third, while the probability of selecting a green ball is two-thirds. For argument's sake, we will say that we chose a red ball in this first selection, as shown here. Now, we want to use this experiment to generate binomial random variables. As such, the probability of selecting a red ball must be the same for all trials. Consequently, if we want the number of red balls selected to be given by a binomial random variable, we must return the red ball to the cup after it was selected. In other words, we must select the balls with replacement, as shown here. This ensures that when we come to select the second ball, the probability of selecting the red one is again one-third, and the probability of selecting the green ball is again two-thirds. As long as we replace the balls that were selected from the cup after their selection, the probabilities of selecting red and green balls are the same in all trials. Consequently, if we continue selecting balls and replacing balls, as shown here, we find that the number of red balls we selected can be modelled using a binomial random variable with, in this case, a p-parameter of one-third. Now, the obvious question that hopefully occurs to you at this stage is what happens if we do not return the ball to the cup after they have been selected? In other words, can we have a random variable that describes how many balls have been selected if we do the sampling without replacement as is shown in the movie here? Well, it is important to note in this case that the number of red balls is not given by a binomial random variable. The reason for this is clear. The probability of selecting a red ball is not constant in this case. We can, in fact, calculate the probability of observing the sequence shown here quite easily. The probability of selecting a red ball in the first trial 
is the familiar 4 over 12, or one third that we saw in the previous slide. Once the red ball is removed, there are 8 green and 3 red balls remaining in the cup. The probability of selecting a green ball in the second trial is thus 8 over 11. There are now 7 green balls left and 3 red balls, so the probability of selecting a green ball is 7 over 10. This leaves 6 green balls and 3 red balls, so the probability of selecting a green ball during this final trial is 6 over 9. All four of these events are independent, and we can thus calculate the probability of the sequence red, green, green, green by taking the product of these four fractions. This sort of reasoning is pretty easy to perform, but what we have calculated here is the probability of a particular sequence of results. What we would like, ideally, is a random variable that does for sampling without replacement what the binomial random variable does for sampling with replacement. In other words, we want a random variable that measures the probability that we will draw out exactly k red balls, successes, if we perform n draws without replacement. The random variable that measures the probability that we will draw out exactly k balls, successes, if we perform n draws without replacement, is the hypergeometric random variable. Furthermore, the derivation of the probability mass function for this random variable is not that difficult if we know a little bit about binomial coefficients. To understand this type of random variable, we first need to define its parameters. The first of these, capital N, tells us the size of the population from which we are drawing our samples. For our now familiar example with the cup containing red and green balls, capital N is equal to 12, because there are 12 balls in the cup. Next, we need to state how many of the objects in this population are successes. For the example with the green and red balls, this capital K will be equal to 4 because there are 4 red balls and because we have decided that the red balls are the successes in this particular instance. Lastly, we need to define how many trials or draws we are going to perform, small n. For the movie shown here, n is equal to 4. Now, obviously, small n must be less than or equal to capital N, as we cannot draw more balls than there are in the population. Notice that by drawing small n is less than capital N balls from the population, we have divided the population into two groups, with sizes small n and capital N, minus small n respectively. There are multiple ways that we could have made this division. We could have drawn out the four balls I've shown in the movie, or we could have drawn out these four completely different balls. The binomial coefficient tells us that there are exactly capital N, choose small n ways, that we could have selected small n balls from the population of capital N balls. It is important to note at this stage that amongst these capital N ball, capital N choose small n ways of drawing out the balls, there will be selections where we choose all red balls, selections where we choose all green balls, and selections where we choose any combination of red and green balls between. In any expression for the probability that we select exactly x red balls, this quantity, capital N choose small n, is going to appear in the denominator as shown here. What needs to appear in the numerator is the number of ways that there are of choosing exactly k balls in amongst these capital N choose n different choices for the four selected balls. This quantity is easy to work out, however. We need to work out how many different ways we could have chosen exactly x red balls from the k red balls that are in the cup and the number of ways that we could have chosen n minus x green balls from the capital N minus k green balls in the cup. 
Once again, these two quantities are given by the binomial coefficients and the total number of ways of selecting x red balls and small n minus x green balls is given by the product of these two quantities. The final probability mass function for the hypergeometric random variable is thus given by this quotient shown here. As I said at the start, the aim of this video is to explain what could be modelled using a hypergeometric random variable. We have seen throughout the video that what we can model is sampling without replacement. We also wanted to derive an expression for the probability mass function for this type of random variable. Hopefully these two ideas are now clear to you, but if they are not, try watching the video again to see if you understand it on the second pass through. Thank you for your attention.